This is Brother Peter Diamond of VaticanCatholic.com. I was going to be talking about Inquisition myths busted. Before I get into the rationale of the Inquisition and whether or not it was justified, I want to refute some of the myths that are common surrounding the number of people who were put to death. I'm going to be focusing primarily on the Spanish Inquisition, and I won't be able to cover all the points in just one part but I will cover some important ones. I will be focusing on the Spanish Inquisition because it's by far the most notorious of all the inquisitorial tribunals. First of all, what was the Inquisition? It was an ecclesiastical court or tribunal created by the Catholic Church for the region of Spain, and it was created in 1478. What people have to understand is that during the Middle Ages, Heresy was considered to be a capital crime, like murder. Okay, the rationale was that just as it is a grave evil to kill the body and to take someone's natural life, it is even a more grave evil to kill someone's soul, which is done through perverting the truth which will send him to hell. And this rationale was shared not only by Catholics at the time in the Catholic Church, but also by the eventual Protestants, such as Martin Luther and John Calvin. Luther openly called for the death of the cardinals and the pope. Uh, John Calvin put people to death. In one notorious case, John Calvin had Michael Servetus put to death uh, because he denied the Trinity. And before Servetus was under his control, uh, Calvin even warned him, he says, that for if he came near him. As far as my authority goes, I would not let him leave alive." End quote. So in the Middle Ages they took heresy very seriously and we can see how this rationale is rooted actually in what God decrees in the Old Testament for certain sins and violations of his law. He decrees the death penalty. And people on all sides were condemned for the capital crime of what they considered to be heresy and many Catholics, countless Catholics, were killed in the eventual Protestant countries such as in Protestant England. Uh, many Catholics were put to death and in many other places. Before I get more into that and whether it was justified and so forth, I want to refute the popular myths about the Inquisition. How many people did the Spanish Inquisition put to death? Well, according to common Protestant opinion, it was millions. For example, just quickly surveying what some different Protestant websites say about this, uh, we read things like this, quote, the Catholic inquisitors tortured, crippled, burned, and imprisoned millions of people. Another website says that for 1,200 years, hundreds of thousands of loyal Catholics tortured and slaughtered tens of millions of, quote, heretics. Another website says that the church killed hundreds of thousands of Jews and took their possessions. Uh, I personally spoke with a Protestant who said uh, I think it was over a hundred million heretics were killed. Well all of these figures are outrageous lies and to refute them I'm going to be relying primarily on a book called The Spanish Inquisition A Historical Revision by Henry Kamen. Why is this book valuable in refuting these lies? First of all it was written by a Jew it was published by Yale University Press in 1997, and this individual, Henry Kamen, is not only Jewish, but he's considered to be, by the historical community, a first-rate historian. He is a fellow of the Royal Historical Society and a professor of higher counsel for scientific research in Barcelona. He was educated at Oxford University, and he's a well-known historian and in many places his commentary is quite pro-Jewish and so you can see that this is not an apologetic work for the Catholic Church but he's honest enough at least in the reporting of the essential facts to destroy and demolish the popular myths that Protestants primarily spread and others about the Spanish Inquisition and its procedures its intentions and what we're going to be discussing right now the numbers of people killed. Oh, before I get further into that, I want to mention that in the popular Protestant book, A Woman Rides the Beast by Dave Hunt, 
He argues on page 79 that in Spain the number of condemned exceeded 3 million with about 300,000 burned at the stake. And so he doesn't go for the millions were executed, but he says 300,000, which is completely wrong. So what does Cayman say? In his book, The Spanish Inquisition, A Historical Revision, Henry Cayman says on page 60, after analyzing some of the data from the various tribunals in different parts of Spain, he says, quote, taking into account all the tribunals of Spain up to about 1530, it is unlikely that more than 2,000 people were executed for heresy by the Inquisition, end quote. On the page just prior to that, page 59, he explains how, quote, the period of most intense persecution of conversos was between 1480 and 1530, okay? And I want to add here that this was the most intensely active period of the Inquisition. There were some periods where you go decades where almost no one was condemned to death. And he quotes some dis different authorities, for instance, one individual who estimated that up to 1490, 15,000 people were reconciled under Edicts of Grace, not killed. And another fellow, Andres Bernaldez, estimated that in the Diocese of Seville alone, between 1480 and 1488, the tribunal had burnt over 700 people and reconciled more than 5,000. A later historian, the analyst Diego Ortiz, claimed that in Seville between 1481 and 1524, again a very intense period, over 20,000 heretics had abjured their errors, and over a thousand obstinate heretics had been sent to the stake. And he goes, there is little doubt that the figures are exaggerated. So he's saying that this claim that a thousand people in this active area, in the most intense period of the Spanish Inquisition, were killed. That claim is very exaggerated. On page 203, he gives us more insight into the total number of people who were put to death. And people have to understand that there's an important distinction between people who were questioned or tried and people who were condemned. Okay? He says, quote, the proportionately small number of executions is an effective argument against the legend of a bloodthirsty tribunal. He goes on, it is clear that for most of its existence the Inquisition was far from being a juggernaut of death, either in intention or in capability. The figures given above for punishments in Valencia and Galicia suggest an execution rate of well under 2% of the accused. It has been estimated that in 19 of the tribunals, over the period 1540 to 1700, under 2% of the accused were executed. If this is anywhere near the truth, it would seem that during the 16th and 17th centuries, fewer than three people a year were executed by the Inquisition in the whole of the Spanish monarchy from Sicily to Peru, certainly a lower rate than in any provincial court of justice in Spain or anywhere else in Europe. A comparison indeed of Spanish secular courts with the Inquisition can only be found in favor of the latter." End quote. And so he's saying that if you factor in all of the years where there was a much lower rate of activity, that about three people a year were killed during the 16th and 17th centuries. A far cry from millions. And in fact, the total population of Christian Spain for a lot of this period was 6 million total. And we have to point out that the Inquisition itself didn't put anyone to death. It was actually the secular authority. The Inquisition would try people, and if they were found guilty of heresy, it would turn them over to the secular authority, which would impose the penalty the capital crime, which was either you know imprisonment or execution for heresy. But many people were reconciled. The courts, on the whole, were quite fair. If you accept the rationale under which it operated, it, they were certainly not perfect, just like any legal system has its mistakes and its abuses. And it should also be emphasized that the Inquisition only had jurisdiction or authority over baptized Christians, okay? So it was investigating people who claimed to be practicing Catholics, but were denying the Catholic faith. And also during this period, which was one of the reasons that the Spanish Inquisition became so active, is because Spain instituted a policy of 
expelling all of the Jews and all of the Muslims from the country. And so what you had was, rather than leave, some of these individuals, these Muslims and Jews, uh, converted, but their conversion was not sincere, and so they were still practicing their false religions. And so the Inquisition a analyzed whether there was evidence for this and tried those who were guilty, and thousands and thousands and thousands were reconciled. And so that was the policy. They gave them the choice to leave the country or convert. So those who stayed and then feigned conversion and did not actually believe in the faith but actually denied it really brought that upon themselves for the most part. And we also have to understand that during this period, Spain had just come to the end of a 700-year war trying to expel the Muslims from the country because the, their very existence was constantly threatened by them. So not only for religious purity, but also for reasons of security, Spain decided to remove all the Muslims. There's much more to be covered. Please look for part two.